everyone! This is a video tutorial on nucleophilic catalysis, also known as covalent catalysis. The reason for the naming is that we're going to have some kind of substance act like a nucleophile and make a covalent bond with the reactant that we're dealing with. So in the process, we're going to be able to speed up our reaction, but by using this catalysis method, we are going to completely change the mechanism by which the product is ultimately formed. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so now let's compare what happens when you do use a nucleophilic catalyst versus when you don't. So if we take a look at the top here, this is going to be the uncatalyzed mechanism. We're just going to run an SN2 mechanism where hydroxide is our nucleophile. So over here, hydroxide will come, it'll attack the carbon position and kick off the chloride. So we form our alcohol and the chloride anion. Now we want to compare that mechanism with a case where we did actually use a catalyst. In this case, we're going to be using iodide. Now, it can seem a little strange to throw iodide in here because iodide is not a particularly fantastic nucleophile, unless, of course, you're using a protic solvent. And in this case, we're using water, which is a protic solvent. Remember, when you're in a protic solvent, a large weak base makes a really good nucleophile. So what happens then is we now have a better nucleophile. So our iodide will be a stronger nucleophile than the hydroxide will. So that means that in this case, iodide will come and SN2 attack this alkyl chloride. Iodide comes, attacks our carbon, and the chloride gets kicked off. So here we have our alkyl iodide and the chloride. Now the reason we want to switch out the I and the Cl is because iodide is a weaker base, which means that it is a much better leaving group. So by substituting the chloride for an iodide, we've created a situation where it makes it easier for hydroxide to come in and kick off the group. Iodide is very easy to get rid of. So now that we have a much easier group to deal with, hydroxide can come, attack this position, and very readily kick off the iodide. So we form our final products. So by creating this new step here that was not in the first mechanism, we've created an easier route for the hydroxide to come and attack our compound. So this would be an example of covalent or nucleophilic catalysis.